I'm in Summerland, BC at What the Fungus, which is an awesome, awesome small scale mushroom operation. Gonna chat with my buddy Brian Callow and I wanna just promote his work because Brian is doing incredible stuff and he's actually YouTubing now, been inspired by me. He's got a channel, I'll have all of his, his links below. Brian is also teaching workshops now and I just think Brian's got so much good information to share and I want to share it with you guys because uh, there's a lot of innovation in this sector, in small scale farming in general, but particularly what Brian's doing and he is a real, um, real innovator in this space, so I want to promote and share his work. So I'm gonna chat with Brian. He's gonna give us a little tour of what's going on right now. So Brian, welcome back, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, happy to be here. So what are you guys up to today? What are you, or these days, what's going on? Uh, we're just getting uh, the farm ready, really. Yeah. Um, we're actually about a month uh, ahead of last year, uh, even though it's been really cold. So definitely a good start to the season. And uh, we're just uh, getting stuff started and focusing on efficiencies right now and kind of getting the farm uh, working the way it should. That's yeah. What, that's what this year is all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you've... Have you expanded some pads? Is there some different? Uh, yeah, I'll show you. This this was just part of our. We we, we took on an, uh, an investor last year uh, for an expansion. Yeah. And uh, we we added this lab, those two greenhouses. Okay. But we also added two more. Pads. Oh, these. Okay. So are you gonna put tents on those ones too? Well, that was the intention. Uh, but I've uh, been working on been working on a lot of different efficiencies and with that we're actually increasing production in our greenhouses now yeah so we actually don't even have uh, enough space in our two labs to even to to, to, to support, support that this. yeah right, and right. I'll, I'll show you that maybe we'll head into the yeah yeah we're, totally we were, we were only doing about 350 400 blocks in the greenhouse and now we're up to about 800 yeah so we're actually each greenhouse is is more productive now um, so for us we're gonna probably put up another lab at the end of this year that's kind of the plan and then hopefully start building on these after that. So is it kind of like you need one lab per what, two tunnels or something like two? Yeah, three? It, yeah, about that. One one lab fits about uh, maybe 12 to 1300 blocks and we can put about 800, 750 blocks, blocks. being like one of those. Mush the mushroom blocks, yeah. yeah. Those are made out of wood chips. Right, right, and right. That's, that's how we fruit our mushrooms. Yeah, so and that's what you guys are breaking apart right now to put yeah, in the compost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, just, uh, we're just cleaning out this greenhouse, getting it ready. Um, I'll bring it into this greenhouse yeah. and we'll show you what, what that looks like. But uh, yeah, because, because we can fit a lot more in the greenhouse now, it just means that uh, we're gonna need to start uh, building a bigger lab. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you're, you probably remember what this looks like. Oh, totally. So now everything is on its side. You know, it's a lot more productive. So... Is that something that you changed from last year? Yeah, Okay. Yeah. We used to have the blocks up here and then they would fruit out the side and we'd right. have space in between. Right. So now... So you've intensified, so this oh, it, is almost great. We're doubling. Like, yeah, like we're pushing the limits hard. Right. Um, so now, now the mushrooms are still going to side fruit because yeah. that's what an oyster mushroom you want it to do. Yeah. So we're just cutting the slits, just kind of so that they'll still grow out the side. Yeah. But they'll grow in a pattern. So like this will grow here, this one will grow here, here, Interesting. And here. So like nothing will touch each other. Right, right, right. Um, well, what's interesting is is these are all uh, overwintered. So we actually uh, filled our greenhouse um, in the fall or something in December. Wow! Let everything freeze. Wow! And and now we're activating it now. So so is this kind of an experiment? Uh, it is, but it's been ongoing it's been, for like three years. Okay. This is okay. the the first biggest run. What's interesting is what I noticed is that we have two different strains. Th this is tree and this is blue oyster. These ones all fruited uh, probably in the last like three weeks. So. You can see they're starting to fruit oh, in the bag already. Yeah, okay, Not okay. a big deal. It just yeah, means yeah. I'm going to put this down 
We're going to yeah. let that die and then yeah. we're going to force mushrooms out here. Yeah. But what's interesting is that these ones didn't because this strain actually uh, likes a little bit warmer temperature. So if I want to start perfecting this overwintering, we probably would focus on something like this because it's not going to fruit. Um, uh, it's not going to fruit as quick as this strain. Right. Because like what will happen is these mushrooms will start rotting eventually and right. it's, you're trying to prevent that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. either way we're going to get a crop out of this and what's cool is is we just filled the greenhouse with uh, what, what was left and uh, and now we, we can jumpstart our season. Killer. And, and we still have stuff that's growing out and we'll have a good year because So it's, it's interesting that your overwintering is almost the same thing I do. Like I'll do it with spinach and kale. Exactly. And it gets me that boost in the early spring meanwhile when you've got your spring production started as normal then that's going to carry you on after this uh, that's it so yeah. this is like your strong start just hit it hard at the beginning yeah just so we right have on. some stuff for for chefs early on yeah 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 um i'll show you in the lab what we do have started we've been working on that since uh february 26 okay so that's what we have so far cool what are you going to pull out of this greenhouse about 700 pounds you we'll, said? Get, we'll get about 700 pounds out of this greenhouse in six weeks damn yeah. what do you what's your average price per pound all that out. Average is ten bucks. So um, all this is eight dollars, but uh, we're moving into ten and twelve dollars. So that's basically seven to eight thousand dollars of mushrooms in that greenhouse. Yeah, yeah, over about Damn. six weeks. Fantastic. So, so we'll, we'll definitely uh, do a few months this year. We're over twenty. 25,000. Damn. Yeah, right on. We're, we're, we're just at the beginning of really kind of the business is starting to come together now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right on. Yeah. So Brian, what are you going to be doing with on your YouTube channel? This, this, what's, what are your, uh, what are your plans of that? So what are yeah. you going to be showing people? So yeah, our, our channel is, uh, really it's just education. No one's teaching anyone how to Nobody's do this stuff. this stuff. Yeah. And we're moving into the education sector. We're offering uh, a program called the mentorship where people can come work here for a week mm -hmm. and, and kind of learn what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And because I've been, I've been doing, uh, these 30 day workshops on our farm for about three, uh, three years now. Um, I have a really good handle of, of how to kind of tailor that program. And, and now we're just doing a more aggressive, yeah. uh, one, week, one yeah. week program for people who can't give up a month of their time. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And there, there's definitely a huge need for that. So how do people find out about that? Just go on your website or? Yeah, go on our website. Uh, definitely on our YouTube channel. We're talking about it all the time. Okay, right and on. Uh, it's just, you know, a huge opportunity for someone maybe that has started growing mushrooms, but uh, they're looking for some tough answers and yeah. and uh, they, they want to just kind of bring their business up to the next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've also been doing some consulting for people over the winter as well, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's because yeah. of you. It's been, it, it, it's, it's <laughs> awesome. been, it's been awesome. And, yeah. uh, and you know, honestly, it's been a great experience. The more I talk about this business, just the better I am. Absolutely. It's awesome. Yeah, the better you get at it. So, you know, we have everything in here. This is over the last three weeks. It's warm in here. Yeah, it's about 22 degrees. Okay. Um, everything's white. That's that's what you're looking for. It's it's beautiful in here. Yeah, yeah. We've really cut down on our contamination. We figured out a lot of the problems that we've been having. Yeah. And uh, I just did a consultation in Ontario with Brad Coons at Top Shelf Mushrooms, and we had an opportunity to collaborate and really kind of hash out a lot of ideas, and it really benefited both of us. Fantastic. And, and for us this year, like. It's going to be an amazing year. It's, nice. it's going to be awesome. Well, I'll, I'll definitely come back when you're like full on in production and yeah, check totally. in again. Yeah, well, we, sh we should have mushrooms uh, second, first, first, second week of April. That's kind of the plan. Fantastic. Yep. We got to get our trade back going again, too. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Katie and I have been just like craving that again. Um, I'll show you uh, what a couple projects we're working on as well. Okay. Actually. We put this up. This uh, covered uh, shelter up um, since you were here. Yep. Um, this is part of our farm. Yeah, experience. this one was yeah. new. This one was here before, right? Yep. So yeah. we've we just done another mirror image there. So we actually, we milled our own lumber. Thor has a mill on property here, and that's what we're set up actually just right here. Yeah. So we're going to be cutting up these logs, and we're going to be finishing uh, this structure in the back here. Yeah. So we're going to be putting uh, uh, in the back, similar to this, it's going to go over top of the two peaks here. Uh, okay. We're gonna put a roof, walk in, uh, uh, walk in refrigeration Killer. in the back, yeah, with yeah, the mushroom yeah. packing room as well. Nice. You, believe it or not, um, I have never used walk in refrigeration for this business yet. Um, well, because you it, just harvest fresh and then they're gone. Yeah, we, we've been using freezer chests, but uh, 
we, we still chill them and then, and then package and deliver, but uh, we, we rotate everything so quickly that it hasn't been an issue, but um, definitely it's time. So that's, that's what we're moving yeah, into. Yeah, you're probably finding with that increased production, you're <laughs> bottlenecking a little bit and that cooler is gonna, yeah, yeah that's, that's so key. It's, it's interesting too, because that's so, that's so common in almost every type of farm, whether it's vegetables, any type of animal production, it's like that post-harvest, area is the bottleneck of yeah. everything. Well, it's a big expense. Yeah. Um, you know, a typical walk-in cooler is going to be about ten to $15,000. Uh, we, we actually, we built one last year and it's just in the shop over there. Um, and we're going to move it over here. We, we built it in for about maybe 4,000 bucks. Yeah. So, you know, you can, you can uh, do it yourself, but uh, for, for those who can't, uh, it is quite a big, a big expense. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, this is, this is our main production area. So we're just trying to bring it together and uh, kind of uh, have everything at our fingertips here. So this is uh, over the next two years. Killer. Yep. Nice. Um, so yeah, the one thing I wanted to ask you, Curtis, was uh, right now we use these kits and, and they work well, um, but uh, we're moving towards uh, redesigning our greenhouse, really just because I've been inspired by what you've done on your farm. And we want to move towards uh, a winter white poly yeah. Over top with uh, channel lock and wiggle wire. Double and air poly, like with a blower uh, for insulation? Well, that, that might be the case. Right now, uh, we're always sold out. And I don't necessarily think there's a market here in the winter. So I'm not right, sure if right. we're looking to grow uh, in the winter here yet. Yeah. But um, what we're looking to do is have a greenhouse that lasts longer. And I'm not sure like how long you think your covers last. They last. I, I haven't even seen the end of them. So, so with these, with my, these, my poly, I've, I've had some of my greenhouses on seven years already. That's amazing. And they're still going. Yeah. With, with these covers, the, the plastic will start flaking off over time and they have about a three year uh, life. Oh, wow. Okay. But they're cheap to replace. It's about 400 bucks right. to, get, to get a new door on either end and a new cover. Right. But I think for long term, um, we're you looking, know what? Greenhouse poly would even be cheaper. Yep. To do that. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, we're even thinking about framing in the sides, either with metal or wood, and, yeah. and maybe actually using coreplast and to get it like a UV protected coreplast that uh, will maybe give us a little bit more protection from the sun because the sides don't have the shape cloth over top. So if there's any mushrooms growing near the doors, they can get exposed to the sun. Right, right, right. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we're headed towards. I wasn't sure about maybe some suppliers that I should be looking for for, for poly anyways. CY in Growers yep. in Lower Mainland is, is the cheapest around. And uh, yeah, you could build almost a traditional greenhouse end wall and have it semi-permanent. Yep. You could do that actually with, if you wanted to keep that intact, uh, you could just make that at a polycarbonate. Polycarbonate. And then those would last forever. Yep. And then you could just do the rest in, in greenhouse poly and that would do, I think that would do everything you needed to do. I, I think that's what it's about. Because the shade cloth, you know, the shade cloth is also going to reduce the, the, uh, yep. the it's going to make the longevity, it's going to make them last longer basically. So if you did just standard greenhouse poly, you'd get a lot more time on yeah, it. Yeah, it's really just about having something that lasts, that, you know, it doesn't really matter how much it costs, it's about just having something that works really well. That's and, it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's kind of where we're headed. It's appropriate technology. You know, I, I was going to do it now, but I'm running out of time, so I've, I've just bought two replacement covers. Um, yeah, just, just to gonna, get up and going now. Yeah, that's all that's important right yeah. now. But I'm, I'm starting to think about the design, and, and that's something we're probably going to start changing next year. Yeah, or like that's a project for the fall or winter when you wrap up. And exactly. Then, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So anyways, I just wanted to actually, that was one of the things I wanted yeah. to talk to you yeah, about. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. You're coming here, right? Yeah, so I'm here. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways. That's, cool. That's about it, I guess. Awesome stuff, dude. <laughs> well, thanks for thanks for joining us, Brian. I'll leave all your info below, and I would encourage everybody to subscribe to Brian's channel and check his shit out, because you're going to get uh, more or less what I do um, with, uh, with this awesome mushroom operation. Awesome. All right, brother. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Chris.